Okay, so it's Scott here for Rebellious Noise, and we are backstage at Madison Square Garden. Hi, my name is Kelly Klein, and I am at Madison Square Garden preparing for my Women of Honor World Championship Challenge tomorrow. So I am going to face the current Women of Honor World Champion for the championship, and it'll be the fifth time facing her. Yeah. Uh, we've both won twice, so this will be the tiebreaker. Okay, so, I mean, an obvious thing to say is women's wrestling right now amazing you know so uh what kind of time period were you starting to get into the wrestling industry uh, and what did the business look like at that time yeah, so i that? i started in wrestling uh probably about 2005 and uh the business was changing a little bit the attitude era had had sort of wound down um but there was still a lot of um I guess limitations yeah. uh, as far as the opportunities that might have been available for women. Right. Um, the knockouts division got started around the time I started in wrestling, so that was really exciting, mm -hmm. and that was a moment where there started to be different possibilities. So um, as we've moved forward through the years, and there have been more and more possibilities and opportunities available, I, I feel like more women have started training and have decided to take yeah. wrestling as as the route and um, choose professional wrestling as their path. And because of that, then we get more and more amazing talent, um, and that just keeps feeding the, the industry and feeding the women's side of it and making yeah. it better and better. I think you, uh, you touched on a really good thing there, actually, uh, the knockouts division. I think a lot of people forget and don't really give credit to what the knockouts division did. The early days of the knockouts division, you know, with uh, Awesome Kong, um, ODB and stuff like that, even, um, you know, Velvet Sky, Angelina Love and stuff like that. I remember watching those days of uh, TNA Impact uh, and just uh, being really excited about the, the women's matches. And I remember they were doing a lot of groundbreaking stuff. So I think it's great that you brought it up because I think this day and age, you know, the women's evolution in WWE, and then you've got uh, over in the UK, we've got WRS wrestling as well, uh, picking up uh, Ring of Honor, uh, New Japan, and all, the, all these companies really are doing amazing things for women. Everybody started to pay attention, I think. Um, but I think it's a really good thing that you've touched on that, that the Knockouts Division was quite um, instrumental in that. I think it Absolutely. does get quite forgotten. Um, you're saying you're going for the title. What would it mean for you to become champion at Madison Square Garden? Uh, well, that would be amazing because just becoming the Women of, women of Honor World Champion is a very big honor and responsibility. Yeah. I would also be the first two-time Women of Honor World Champion. Not a bad accolade um, to have. Yeah, so um, <laughs> any of these things where I'm, I'm a part of history, yeah. those are things that can't be taken away. And then to have that happen at such a historic venue, at an historic event, makes it that much more amazing. What do you think it means for Ring of Honor and New Japan as well to have this combined show here? Obviously, WrestleMania weekend, week now it is, you get plenty of shows. It's been like this for you know, a good 10, 15 years anyway. But um, to get a venue like MSG, which, let's be honest, was a WWE stranglehold for a long, long time, um, it's quite a statement. Uh, it's really exciting. Uh, anytime you know, it's it's really just become wrestling week. Every every year, yeah. every major wrestling company sort of descends on an area, and it's amazing for fans to be able to come to one place and go just take in all of this wrestling, and to to have this opportunity to be at Madison Square Garden for me. Uh, years ago, I remember walking past the building and thinking, "Oh man, it would have been cool if I could have wrestled there." At that time, it just didn't, you know, like you said, it, was, it didn't seem like wrestling was going to... I guess you would only, if it was WWE, and if it was WWE, it would have been a very small chance that you'd even be on the card if you were... Yeah, it was, it was kind of a pipe dream. It was something where I was like, man, that would be cool, but it, it didn't seem likely. So uh, to have something like that um, come around and all of the pieces to fall into place at the right time, um, so many variables had to fall into place for not only for this to happen, but for me to be able to participate in it. And, um, you know, that's, that's really something that's not lost on me. That's really special. Okay, cool. So, what, uh, I, just, I guess we'll finish with what is next. I mean, obviously, we're championship, obviously, we're going to get there. Uh, but after that, what are we going to plan? And what are we going to do? I guess we're going to 
I want to be a fighting champion, and I want to bring in and face all the best women in the world. And I women's wrestling and Ring of Honor in particular and um, you know just continue to to make that statement and, and show that there are opportunities for women and rules for women in wrestling and to just work my way up through uh, Ring of Honor and, and wrestling as well. I'll be screaming you know, well, not just cheering you. It's not my throat, I promise I'll be cheering you. So yeah, it really helps me work out. I hope you have a good show. Yeah, Thank you so much. Hi, this is Kelly Klein from Ring of Honor. You are watching Rebellious Noise. We've got a lot more wrestling content coming this year as well, guys, so please subscribe to Rebellious Noise on YouTube. Check out RebNoise.com and check out our podcast, Talking Beans, where we'll be talking about the main wrestling shows as we do throughout the year.